live on YouTube, starting us up on Rumble. Good morning, hello, and welcome to this date in history, aka TDH. This show is about what happened today throughout the annals of recorded history. Join us as we delve into yesteryear, not only for important and interesting happenings, but to possibly, possibly even answer questions you do not know you have. I am A.O. Xander, and you are you, the viewer. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, today is uh, Moon's Day, a.k.a. Monday, October 14th, 2024. So let's jump into the history today, shall we? Starting us off in the year 530, Dioscorius' short reign as Catholic anti-pope ended with his death. Well, you know, that would, that would do it. So. We also have in 1066, the Battle of Hastings, William, Duke of Normandy, and his Norman army defeated the English forces of Harold II, who was killed in the battle. So not only was he defeated, but he was killed, you know? Like, and that's the, that's the ultimate defeat, you know? When you can't fight another day. 1322, Robert of Bruce of Scotland defeated King Edward II of England at Bylan, forcing Edward to accept Scotland's independence. Yeah, you know, where's that mentality today? You know, free Scotland, free the rest of Ireland, you know, the UK, the quote-unquote United Kingdom. No, the British Empire, or what's left of it, really needs to, like, let go of the last grip that they're doing onto, you know, Scotland and Ireland, you know, so... Uh, thir uh, 1468, Treaty of Peron, Charles the Bold, Duke of Burgundy, and French King Louis XI held under duress, confirmed the Treaty of Arras of 1435, Treaty of Conflans of 1465, and limited territorial gains for the Duke of Burgundy. Welcome to the show! Thank you, Golden you, Moon here. Yeah, just a tad bit late, but you know, like, we're, we're still in the 1400s. Oh, So okay. earlier than yesterday, you know, <laughs> 1960, whatever it was. <laughs> Yeah. But here, actually, uh, 1492, Christopher Columbus left San... Blue. Yeah. Uh, left San Salvador, arrived in Santa Maria of Concepcion, the Bahamas. So this is, uh, you know, when he landed. Yeah. So... Yeah. And, uh, like, I spoke about it a little bit yesterday, but why don't you fill in about the... About what you've learned recently about the whole Columbus... Because today is, you know, what well, well, was known as Columbus Day, now known as... What was it, Indigenous People Day or something? Yeah, you Indigenous know? People Day, yeah. yeah. Well, the theory is that uh, Columbus thought he had landed in India, therefore he called the native people Indians. Not true at all. India didn't even exist by name, obviously the land did, but by yeah. name until 100 years later. Whatever. No, no, like like it was 1948, 46. Oh, true. Hundreds, wait, wait, multiple wait. hundreds. So like actually had nothing to do with that. Half a century. And I or don't know the full, the full term for the indigenous people. Yeah. But one of the partial words in there was uh, indios. Yeah. For the uh, indigenous people. So that's where they think the attachment of Indians came from. Yeah. Not from India. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing I never thought about. Because, like, yeah. you know, India wasn't called India until, I, you know, as I said, yeah. you know, 1947, 48, around the same time as Pakistan. Three, four hundred years later. Like, uh, well, about almost 500, Five half a millennium, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, but like it was, you know, it was called before. Before it was known as India, it was known as a British Raj because it was a British colony and all that stuff. And before that, I don't know what it was called, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, but 1586 here, Mary, Queen of Scots, went on trial for conspiracy against Elizabeth. Yeah. And that's a, that's a movie I have yet to watch. I tried watching it, but it's a little dry. Is it? Yeah. I've seen it. Uh, well, it's more of a historical picture. Yeah. But it's about, you know, like you know, Queen Mary of you know Scotland and everything, and between Scotland. her, and Scotland, 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 yeah. So, you know, well, you know, us of all people should know how to pronounce, Scotland. you know, Scotland, yeah. So, um, but yeah, like there was a whole thing, uh, like because she was cousins with Queen Elizabeth the First or whatever, uh -huh. um, and um, or. Uh, I don't remember who actually. Hold on a second. Um, where did it go? Where seventeen? Wow, well, well, I gotta, I gotta move on up here. Mary, Queen of Scots. Okay, Queen Elizabeth the First. I was right. So, because they were cousins. Oh, okay. Mary and Queen, but you know, like uh, Mary wanted the power, and she was, you know, uh, paranoid that uh, uh, not Ma not Mary. Elizabeth wanted the power, and she was uh, paranoid about Mary, uh, you know, seizing control. Mm -hmm. So she executed her. Like, uh, like, nothing on. like family love. Yeah, decapitation. So, 
Yeah, like to be headed or so. Yeah. That was. That's that's was the way they disposed of people at the time. Well, they still do that today. It's just more hush hush. Ah. You know. Decapitation. Um, well, more like you that's know. What I'm talking about. Well, decapitation or like leaving you alone in a prison cell. You know. Well, certain people did not themselves. 1773, during the American Revolution, the United Kingdom's East India Company T-ships cargo were burned at Annapolis, Maryland. Ooh. Yeah. We also have the first recorded Ministry of Education. That sounds a little concerning. Oh, the Ministry of Education. Yeah. How's that worked out? Yeah. Uh, the Komijja Edukaji Narodoje, Polish for Commission of National Education, was formed in Poland. So Poland was the first one to really do something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, 1774, First Continental Congress made Declaration of Colonial Rights in Philadelphia. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back to the whole Poland thing. Okay. Because, because Polish and Polish are spelled the same in the, in the English word. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you have a Polish remover, nobody, you know, nobody cares. But if you have a Polish remover, now you have problems, you know? <laughs> Just move on, please. I was making a World War II joke. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Uh, we got that. 1812, work on London's Regent Canal started. All right. The what canal? The uh, Regent's Canal. Oh, yeah. It, it's a canal. It's probably yeah. a nothing canal. It's just yeah. like, oh, you know, like canals are really important. We decided it's to put that in. Yeah. Yeah. 1834, the first black U.S. citizen was granted a U.S. patent, Henry Blair, for a corn planter. Woohoo! That's pretty Congrats. cool. Yeah. You know, there's a joke in there, but I don't want to say it. You know, I, actually, I'm going to make me mute my mic earlier. Oh. Uh, 1834 <laughs> in Philadelphia, Whigs and Democrats. This is wild. So you remember the Whig Party, right? Yeah. Okay. Whigs and Democrats. Not personally, of course. Well, you, you, you were born just after uh, the Yeah, I just missed it. Yeah. Uh, Whigs and Democrats staged a gun... Stone and brick battle for control of a Moyesming township election, resulting in one death, several injuries, and the burning down of a block of buildings. Wow. So, literally having a battle over politics. Literally killing killing somebody over who gets control of something. Yeah. You know? Uh, and out of these two parties, one of them is still around and still causing all sorts of problems. Maybe we need to get rid of it. You know? So... 1840, Marionette leader Bashir II, uh, Maronite, not Marionette, Maronite leader Bashir II surrendered to the British forces and went into exile on Malta. Huh. Uh, 1843, British arrested Irish nationalist Daniel O'Connell in Clonarth near Dublin, charging him with conspiracy, later cleared by appeal to the House of Lords. So here we go again. Like, you know, British are just oppressing the hell out of the Irish and the Scottish constantly. You know, they just, just, Britain, Britain needs to go. Uh, 1862, baseballer James Cregan ruptured bladder hitting home run, died on the 18th, so four yeah. days later. Wow. You know? <laughs> and then you wonder why I freak out when I have to, when I get on you about, you know, taking care of yourself and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know, if, if a guy can die four days after rupturing his bladder playing a game, what chance do you think you have? Take care of yourself. Don't play the game, I guess. Well, 1862, uh, Excelsiors defeated Unions of Morrisania 13 and 9. That has no to be baseball. Yes, it is. Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to do a surface level scratch of this article here really quick. It has to be baseball. I would think so. Yeah, yeah baseball team. Okay. okay. Yeah. No. I mean, 1860, uh, 1862, what other sport really is out there? Rugby? You know? Like. Good question. I have no idea what it was. Football, Football wasn't football. really around. No. Soccer, I don't think, was around. I don't know. You know? Well, uh, cricket might have been around. Cricket's been around forever. <laughs> well, you know, like, the, I, I, I guess you can say cricket needs to go the way I say Britain needs to go, and this needs to go, and that needs to go, you know? Uh, come on, world, do better. 1865, Cheyennes and Arafahos. Uh, Arafa signed a peace treaty then they were chased out of Colorado <laughs> so it sounds right. like uh, Native Americans yeah, yeah. Cheyennes yeah yeah, Cheyenne. yeah. 
Yeah. So they signed a peace treaty and then they were uh, chased out. Gee, how peaceful. 1867, the 15th and last Takugawa shogun, Takugawa Yoshinobu, resigned in Japan. So the last of that shogunate. Yeah. Uh, 1882, University of the Punjab was founded in present-day Pakistan. Mm. All right. You know, speaking of Pakistan and such. Uh, 1884, George Eastman, not to be confused with Clint Westman or whatever, you know, Eastman, West, Northman, Southman, you know. I'm making a, a, a directionary joke here. Not good. Not a good one. Uh, no, so the compass is just spinning on that? <laughs> not, not, not magnetating? No, not in any way, no. Uh, he patented paper strip photographic film. Um, so I guess you know, just a, you know. Yes. Like, well, it sounds important. I don't know what it is, but well, it sounds important. No, let, me, let me look this up here instead of just, just guessing. Film. Paper strip photographic film specifically. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought oh, it was. Oh, okay. That. Yeah. You know? Uh, you know, like uh, what comes yeah. prepackaged yeah. in the in the disposables we used to use, you know, click, sh- sh- click, sh- yeah. sh- you know? Like, so I wonder if, uh, actually, no, I, I, don't, I don't even need to wonder if anybody uses those anymore. Of course they don't. We all have these magic rectangles. Yeah. You know? Digital. Yeah. Uh, 1892, Arthur Conan Doyle, that's that's a name. You know, you, know, you, should, you should remember that name, Arthur Conan Doyle. Why? One of the more known authors. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Published The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, oh. collection of 12 stories originally, originally published serially in the Strand magazine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Arthur Conan Doyle, one of the uh, more known authors in history. Sherlock Holmes, a big not name. Not known to me yet. Just well, not known to me. Well, now you do. Yeah, now At now least for the is. time being. Um, 1893, Harry Wright suggested umpires keep ball strike count a secret. <laughs> Surprise, you're out. That seems like it could be used to... That sounds uh, kind of dumb. Well, I mean, yeah. Like, I can understand, like, you know, wanting to keep it a secret to prevent, you know, the the two teams from utilizing that in some play, but at the same time, what if the ump just gives you another strike or takes one away, you know? Like, well, what, what, why would you want to keep the, the count secret? There's no point there. Yeah, especially since somebody else could be counting, too. You know? Yeah, but you don't know what the call is. The umpire makes the call. Oh, so he, he doesn't say. He doesn't say what it is. I thought he said what it is, but uh, but then for whatever. Uh, okay. Well, that's weird. That's really weird. That's really weird. Okay, I, I was thinking completely differently. 1899 here, Morning Post reporter Winston Churchill just de- departed to South Africa. 1899. He was uh, he was already you know working. You know. We all know yeah. about Winston Churchill. Yeah. Oh. Uh, 1906 Baseball World Series in an all-Chicago series. The White Sox defeated the Cubs 8-3 to at Southside Park to win the title. 4-2, uh, to two, the first American League victory. All right. Uh, this year there's the potential, when I say potential underlined, uh, of an all-New York City World Series. Huh. The Mets and Yankees. But they got to go through a lot of good teams mm. where they both get there. Well, we'll see how it plays out. So the Dodgers are going to ruin that. Let's go Dodgers! Yeah, absolutely, they're in. Yeah, they're, they're playing the uh, Mets right now. Well, not right now, today. <laughs> you know, like I want to see. If anything, I'm more of an Angels fan. But like between the Dodgers and the Angels, it's kind of the same thing. Like I like them both. Yeah. Like, like I started out as an Angel, and I and it's more for my my love for for mom having been a Dodgers fan since they were in Brooklyn, yeah. you know, like that's where she was born, yeah. you know, like she, she, she's a Brooklyn girl, you yeah. know, and they followed her out here, essentially. Well, I was obviously grew up with the Dodgers, I mean, I remember when they came to, to L.A., played the Coliseum for a while, <laughs> and yeah, so I was a big Dodger fan, but yeah, that kind of wanes as you go along. Yeah. Get older, you don't really care. I mean, I've never really cared about sports to begin with. Right. So... And I, and I used to be a Ducks fan, you know, until uh, I learned that uh, Disney created them. And now uh, now I hate the Ducks more than uh, anybody can possibly even hate the Raiders, mm. you know. Like, simply because of their association with Disney. They're done. 1908, uh, Baseball World Series. Chicago Cubs defeated the Detroit Tigers 2 to none at Bennett Park. Detroit to clinch 4-1 to series win. 6,210 fans was the smallest crowd in World Series history. 
clubs uh, the Cubs retain the title. All right. And then we have an upset uh, in 1908 over seating arrangements at the Baseball World Series. Sports reporters formed a professional group that will become the Baseball Writers Association of America. Oh, okay. All right, so happy birthday to that. Yeah. Yeah. 1909, Pirates defeated the Tigers 5-4, to four, for, forces the first full seven-game uh, World Series. What does that mean? Well, that forces means it first seven full. games. In other words, the seven he had to uh, win four, but this was the first time it went to the actual seven games. In other hmm. words, they were tied 3-3. Three, ah, three. Uh, okay. Okay. In 1911 here, we have the largest baseball crowd ever at 38,281 Polo Grounds. Saw Giants defeated the A's 2-1. to one. The gate record was $77,379. You know, now, I wonder how much that is today. The A's back in the day, I don't know if that far back if I'm right, but they used to be the Philadelphia A's. Sounds about right. I've, I've spoken about the Philadelphia A's. Uh, money. Okay, uh, 1911 value. Okay. Come on. There we go. No, that's... It doesn't... No, I don't want to know what the money of the K-12 is. Hold on a second. Uh, money, value, years. Let's see if I can find this. Inflation. Here we go. Frickin' hell. And in 1911, uh, it doesn't even go back that far. Well, um, as far as 1914... It's worth two million four hundred twenty-three thousand two hundred forty-seven dollars today. Um, you know this uh, the yeah. gate record. Yeah. Uh, well, um, wow. Yeah. Nineteen twelve. This is a very this is a big one. I don't know why this isn't like highlighted everything. You know, especially like what's 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 going on involving a certain orange man and all the uh, attempts on him. Wow. Uh, Nineteen twelve. Bull Moose. Teddy Roosevelt was shot while Ooh. campaigning in Milwaukee. And, you know, like, as a story, again, there's a lot more to this that, that that they're not letting us know here in our main source. But basically, he was up there. Uh, he wasn't just randomly shot, but, but, like, he was up, he was giving a speech. Yeah. And he was shot in the chest. Now, um, he had he had some book here, uh, but he also, you know, he was he was built. He was a rough rider. So he had yeah. muscles. Yeah. You know, but the bullet was lodged in his left pectoral. But he, he, he continued on with his speech for around two hours wow. before going and seeking medical attention. And I actually have here, this is the thumbnail of the day. This is actually his quote. I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot, but it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. He was in the bull moose party, you know? Yeah. So, But he got shot, and he kept going for an hour and a half, two hours, maybe even longer. I don't know the exact semantics. But he kept going with his speech or whatever it was he was doing, and then he went to the hospital with a bullet in his chest. Crazy. You know, and now today, you look around, and they're, they're trying to cover everything up. It's like, bro. <sighs> anyway, 1912 as well, Cretan representatives were admitted to the Greek assembly. In doing so, the Greek government challenged the Turkish government. Mm -hmm. All right. We all know that the you know Greeks and the Turks have been at each other's throat forever. Yeah, a long time. I mean, well, you know, look at look at back at Xerxes, look at back the Ottomans, you know, at, at Leonidas in the 300, and even before that, the Marathon, the, you know, the, the Battle of Marathon, that was, you know, Persian trying to invade the Greeks. They, they've always been, at, at, you know, and, and what is, uh, what is Persia? You know, well, like, what, what following was Persia? Turkey? What are you talking about? Like, like, you know, their, their theological beliefs and all that stuff. Oh, Muslim. Yep. Oh. Um, uh, 1913, uh, Shenigan Colliery Disaster, the United Kingdom's worst coal mining accident, an explosion came, claimed 439 lives. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mining, you know. It's tough, oh, yeah. tough life. Uh, 1914, German troops occupied Brug. You know, uh, for the drug? Brug drug? World War I. Ah, you know, so, okay. 14. 1916, the first PGA Championship Men's Golf in Siwanee Country Club in Bronxville, New York. Englishman Jim Barnes defeated Jock Hutchinson by one hole in the 36-hole final. All right. And that's the first PGA Championship. Otherwise, you know, yeah. who cares? So, 1916 as well, sophomore tackle and guard Paul Robeson were excluded from the Rutgers football team when Washington and Lee University refused to play against a black person. Uh, wow. Yeah. 
Here we go. Wow. Oh. Six, six, six. Yep. And there's a lot of people out there who still think that the world operates in this mentality, and and, and they're they're really pushing to, to you know, flip it and have uh, have what they believe are the oppressors become the uh, the oppressees. But there really is no oppression. There wasn't, but now there is. Uh, 1916, the Perm State University was founded in Russia. Okay, permanent state university. Perm, I don't know. Perm, whatever. Sometimes they just abbreviate random things. Yeah. I don't understand. 1920, part of Pesamo province ceded uh, by Soviet Union to Finland, so they gave it to Finland. Yeah. yeah. And then they uh, probably took it back during the Winter War. Uh, two years later, the first automated telephones, Pennsylvania Exchange in New York. Uh-huh. So like that was when it, uh, you started uh, no longer hearing, like, oh, Miss McGee, your call to Brooklyn went through. You know? I guess, yeah, yeah automated. Yeah. 1922 as well, the first Tom McCann shoe store opened on 3rd Avenue in New York City. Tom McCann. I I figured you'd know what that is. Yeah. Big chain of stores. Yeah. I have no clue who they are. Can't imagine they're still around today, but yeah, Uh, that was a big name in shoes. Tom McCann. Let me look this up here. Tom McCann. Um, All right. Are they defunct? Yeah, 1996, 28 years ago. As retail stores, yeah. they might still be around online, um, but uh, its shoes have been sold in Kmart and Sears. It consists of leather dress, casual, and athletic shoes under its Tim Sport label. In the '90s, Tom McCann and hundreds of retail stores in the U.S. Uh, oh, had hundreds of retail stores in the U.S. and was one of the oldest, best-known shoe retailers in the country. As of late 2008, the brand was controlled by Sears Brand LLC. Well, that's not good because Sears is on their way out. If they I think are, they're out. Yeah. So no, they still probably have mail order or whatever you want to call yeah. it online. Yeah. One century ago, yeah. 1924, Arnold Schuberg's opera Die Glückel Hand premiered in Vienna. Okay. Yeah. But that was 100 years ago on this date. You know? Even if it's a nothing article, I got to put it in because that's 100 years ago. Yeah. You know? 1925, anti French uprising in Damascus. French inhabitants flee. So Damascus, that's well, that's that's a biblical city, right? Right. Yeah. So, yep. Nineteen twenty-six, A. A. Milne's book Winnie the Pooh was released. No kidding. Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. Yeah. Who do uh, in nineteen twenty-six he'd be writing about Xi Jinping? You know. Yeah. So, nineteen twenty-nine baseball World Series, Philadelphia A's beat Chicago there Cubs three to two at Shelby Park to clinch four games to one. Series victory, A's first title in 16 years. Nice. Now, you know? the Philadelphia A's moved to Oakland, obviously. They were there for years and years and years. Now they're building a stadium uh, on the Strip in Vegas. Ah. So it'll be the Vegas A's. A's, A's. Ah. You know, I don't know. I, I think by the time you get to Vegas, you, you've been the community doorknob. Because, like, yeah. I mean, you know, once again, the, you, you know what that term means, right? Well, I kind of get it, yeah. But, you know, everybody gets a turn. Oh, okay. It's, it's a prostitute. No, okay. So, so, the doorknob. Yeah, you know, Everybody I gets a turn. So, I mean, like, you know, you're talking about the A's. They've been to, what, three, four, some odd cities. Look at the Raiders. Now they're in Vegas. Well, you the know? A's have been in Oakland only. You're thinking of the... Uh, Oakland Raiders. They came to L.A., went back and forth, and they went on. Well, I'm now, talking about that. But, oh, but and now the uh, well, you said that these football A's, is already in Vegas. Okay, well, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, okay, the Philadelphia A's. Yeah. That's a baseball team. Yeah. Okay. Now they're going to Vegas. Yeah. As the, as the Vegas baseball team. Yeah. Okay. Then as the bas- at the at the football team is the Raiders. Yeah. Vegas seems to have at least two, to my knowledge now, community doorknobs of sports teams okay. because those teams have been all to several yeah. other places too and you know when you're down and out and you have nowhere else to go you go to Vegas to drown your sorrows and to just dig yourself into a hole and disappear in the desert essentially 1931 first broadcast of Dutch Radio People's University okay while that was going on Spanish courts agreed to separation of church and state I'm all for that mm-hmm. you know absolutely 1933, Nazi Germany announced its withdrawal from the League of Nations. That's uh, not a surprise. Yeah. 
Uh, 38, Nazis planned Jewish ghettos for all major cities. Uh, uh. 1939, BMI, and I'm not talking about Body Mass Index, I'm talking about Broadcast Music Incorporated was formed. Okay, never uh, heard of it. Either. Well, now we have. 1940, uh, Balham tube station in London was bombed by the German Luftwaffe during the Blitz, killing between 64 to 66 people. So, I mean, you know, they use their underground and all that stuff as bunkers. Yeah. And, you know, quite often and everything. And, uh, but, you know, those were not built to be bunkers. Those were transit well, hubs. But, true. I mean, at least you're underground. It's better than being above. Yeah. Uh, 1941, uh, first mass deportation of Kowano, Lodz, Minsk, and Riga. And I know Minsk is somewhere in Europe, so this, this has to be, um, you know, World War Two. You know, Holocaust stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, 1942, a German assault on a tractor factory. Thousands killed Jeez. over a tractor factory. Uh, 1943, 600 Jewish prisoners mounted an uprising at the Nazi co concentration camp in Sobibor, Poland. 300 successfully escaped. So, you know, one and two. Like, 300 got out anyway. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, like, that's why I never really understood about the Holocaust. How, how come so many millions of people just sat there and, and allowed to, to be killed? You know, like, like, you know, there, there was, you know, there was, of course, Schindler's List, there was this, there was that, yeah. there was the hare hunt at Shelley, but, I mean, there, there's, there's so few examples of them actually standing up for themselves, it really makes you wonder, why wouldn't they, you know, like... I mean, well, you know, that, that makes me think. I felt that. Um, that makes me think about the let's roll, you know, uh, from 9-11. Yeah, you know? I got like, that. But you you, got, you're you going to die anyway. Go out fighting. Don't just sit there like, oh, I'm condemned. Okay, well, I'll be a good little boy and I'll just wait here until you kill me. No, fight. Fight. You know? Do Easier something. You said than done. No. You're just going to sit there and, and you know, stupid. Anyway, 1943, Japan declared Philippines independent under President Jose P. Laurel. Okay. Uh, that's that's during their occupation, I guess. Like, how are they? they that's World War Two. Yeah, yeah. So they, they took over the Philippines. Yes, they did. Uh, 1943 as well, U.S. 8th Air Force lost 60 B-17s during an assault on Schuin Fort. So they, that's a bunch. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, they, they lost... A lot of aircraft during those bombs. They oh, just yeah. send them in mass because they knew a lot of them were going to be shot down. I mean, what was uh, what was the life expectancy? Two, three missions? Uh, yeah, something so like horrible. something low. So, 1944, British troops marched into Athens. All right, yeah. liberating that. 1945, Chicago Cardinals ended a record 29-game losing streak. De defeated the Bears. Okay. The Bears. 29-game uh, losing streak. Ouch. That hurts. Yeah. 1946, Netherlands and Indonesia signed a ceasefire. And I'm just wondering, you know, what that is. Like, you know, World War II has ended. What is Netherlands and Indonesia? Netherlands and Indonesia? They're, all, they're thousands of miles away. Yeah, they're not neighbors. Like, uh, the Renneville Agreement. Oh, United Nations Security Council. Uh, political accord between the Netherlands, which is seeking to reestablish its colony in Southeast Asia. And Indonesian Republicans uh, seeking Indonesian independence during the Indonesian Re National Revolution. Okay. So, uh, yeah, if anybody's interested, look up the Rhine, uh, the Renville Agreements. Uh, uh, 1947, Chuck Yeager in a Bell XS-1 made the first supersonic flight, Mach 1.015. Yep. I remember that. So the first time... I don't remember, um, but I know of it. Now, see, here's the thing. Um... I saw somewhere that now this is you know recorded as the first supersonic flight. I want to argue this is the first intentional supersonic flight. Because that seems way too early. Nineteen forty-seven. That the date? No. Yeah, forty-seven. That seems way too early. Uh. Something's wrong there. Hold on a second. You know, let me just look this up. First supersonic flight. Supersonic oh, aircraft. 1947. No way. Uh, let's see here. First flown December 31st, 1968. That's more like it. Um, 
Supersonic aircraft were developed in the second half of the 20th century. Super have been used for research, but only two supersonic aircraft. The Tuberlev Tu-144. Oh, well, no, no, that, that's civil use airline. That's something else. History. The first aircraft to fly supersonic in level flight was the American Bell X-1 experimental plane, which was powered by a 6,000-pound or 2,700-kilogram thrust rocket powered by liquid oxygen and ethyl alcohol. Most supersonic aircraft have been military or experimental aircraft. Okay, yada, yada, yada. Um, the first recognized flight exceeding the speed of sound by a manned aircraft in controlled level flight was performed on October 14, 1947 mm -hmm. by the experimental Bell X-1 research rocket plane piloted by Chuck Yeager, as I just read right here. Okay, my bad. Now, it said here, the first, recognized, the first recognized flight exceeding the speed of sound by a manned aircraft in controlled level flight. So that's going this yeah, way. Because yeah. I read somewhere, as I was saying earlier, that the first actual time unintentionally that we broke the sound barrier was uh actually much earlier i think in the 20s or i think even uh when a biplane was nose diving straight down and just through um uh, terminal velocity it broke the sound barrier but that was not a level flight not controlled or anything right. so so our first uh actual breaking of the sound barrier as far as i'm aware and concerned was accidental in the late teens, early twenties of the of the Well I'm 1900s. shocked that's nineteen forty seven that yeah. early. I'm shocked. Yeah. But there it is. Yep. Uh, nineteen forty eight, large scale fighting between Israel and Egypt. Here we go yeah. again. Yeah. Um, because you know they, they took a bunch of a bunch of you know, a bunch of Jews, put them into a huge area full of Arabs, and then they're wondering why the Arabs are upset. Gee, I wonder. Uh, 1949, 14 U.S. Communist Party leaders convicted of sedition. Good. I don't know what that means. Um, sedition. Let me look this up here really quick. Uh, sedition often includes a subversion of a constitution and incitement of discontent toward or insurrection against established authority. Okay. So basically anything that the left does. You know? So. Um, and, you know, if the shoe fits... Communists, sedition, they go hand in hand. And, you know, what's what's uh, what's half of our politics today? Communists. And what are they doing? Sedition. You know? Going around telling everybody that a certain orange man is, uh, is a reincarnation of an Austrian. And then covering up every attempt on his life. So, if the shoe fits, we need McCarthyism back. 1949, Chinese Red Army occupied Canton. And I believe this is when uh, China was uh, going against um, uh, Tibet and all that oh, stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, there's, a, there's a movie, Kundun, um, and there's actually a really powerful scene, uh, Kundun. I got I to gotta watch it, but it's about, um, it's about uh, Kundun scene shoes. Um, hold on a second. Religion. It's about uh, one of the lamas, you know, like the da Dalai Lama yeah. and everything, um, and uh, he sits down with Mao Zedong, you know, the leader of the, yeah. the, the communist revolution and all that stuff, and uh, Mao Zedong is straight up like, you know, oh, religion is a poison, yada, 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 like, you know, like, what's the first thing communists do? It doesn't matter if they're Russian, you know, Chinese, white, whatever, you know, communists, the first thing they do is go after religion. As, as you have, have you know, educated me on. Because what's the number one thing all religion wants? Only their religion. And what's the religion of communism? Politics. Yeah. So, you know. 1951, Organization of Central American States Formed. Yeah, and this is the scene I want to show you after the show, by the way. It's, it's really powerful. Um... 1952, one of the most influential of all modernist buildings, the Unité de Habitation, designed by Le Corbusier, was officially inaugurated in Marseille, France. All right, we're in 52. I'm, here we go. So, um, Unité de Habitation. Let's take a look at this building, see what it looks like. Move this over here. All right, get rid of that. Uh, images, let's see. Oh, this building. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's 
it's it's basically a, a oppressive architecture, like you know Soviets, like you know block style, yeah. but uh, like because it has like you know slight changes, you can see like it's not all uniform, yeah. and they have different colors per every block. Then suddenly you know it's not as oppressive. No, it's still oppressive. 1952. Uh, UN General Assembly first met at its new headquarters in New York. We've been in there, in that building. The UN? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. 1953, first three Dutch female police officers went into service. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have Charlie Dresden resigned rather than take one year contract as Dodger manager. So, yeah. DeRozan. Uh, oh, Charlie De DeRozan. It says dressing. Charlie. Well, it looks like maybe it's wrong. Dressing. I always thought it was DeRozan, but I could be wrong. Maybe it is DeRozan. I mean, you know, yeah. this source has done many grammatical mistakes of all sorts of calibers. Uh, 1953, Great Britain performed a nuclear test at Emu Field, Australia. Take that, emus! Take that! Australia may have not been able to defeat you, but their, but their, you know, their parents' country certainly can. Let's nuke the emus. Teach them a lesson. I've told I've told you about the emu war. Yeah. You know Australia. Yeah. They, they lost yeah. to the emus. Yeah. Uh, U.S. President Dwight D. Eisenhower promised to fire any federal worker taking Fifth Amendment with regard to Communist Party affiliation. That's where I draw the line. All right. If you're a communist, I don't like you. But if you're in this country. You know, if you know, you if you are a, a, a you know a, a, a citizen of this country, then you have just as much right to the the, uh, the Constitution and the amendments as anybody else does, including myself. Sure. And just because you're communist now, you don't you don't have the ability to plead the fifth. No, no, I am completely anti-communist, but I am even more anti this. You know, sure. so. 1954, Israeli act of revenge in Quibla, Jordan, killed 53. Oh, hey, look, they, they murdered 53 people in an act of revenge. Huh, are they defending themselves here? I don't think so. Oh. 1956, Indian social reformer B.R. Ambedkar and 500,000 supporters converted to Buddhism in Nagpur. That's a lot of Buddhists. Oh, that's a bunch. Half a million there. 1957, Canadian Secretary of State for External Affairs Lester B. Pearson won the Nobel Peace Prize for his aid in resolving the Suez Crisis, the first Canadian to win the award. Woo well, hey, you can still become the second. There you go. <laughs> I'm not sure how many Canadians have won the award. So, um, uh, let's see here. FIR. 1957, Queen Elizabeth II became the first Canadian monarch to open the Parliament of Canada with a speech from the thro uh, with a with a speech from the throne. So that's the name of the speech, speech from the throne. I don't know how Elizabeth II is a, Can well, she's a monarch of Canada, but she's not a Canadian monarch. She wasn't born in Canada. No. No, so she's a monarch of Canada, not a Canadian monarch. Okay. You, well, if you're a Canadian monarch, you're a monarch from Canada. Yeah. If you're a Canada monarch, you're a monarch of Canada. Yeah. Not from. Um, terminology, semantics. I thrive in it. Yeah, I know you Yeah. Do. 1958, uh, Maleski Republic became autonomous republic in French community. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, the District of Columbia Bar Association voted to accept Black Americans as members. All right, Black lawyers. Yeah. Yeah. 58. 1960, Peace Corps first suggested by John F. Kennedy in a speech at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor or Ann Arbor. The Peace Corps. 1961, Frank Lorcio's musical How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, starring Robert Morrison and Rudy Vallee, opened at 46th Street Theater in New York City, running for 1,415 performances, winning seven Tony Awards and a Pulitzer Prize. Well, you know, uh, this reminds me a lot of uh, the producers, you know? Uh, 1962, Houston Oiler George Belanda threw for six touchdown passes versus New York Titans, 56 to 17. Woo! 56 to 17. That is a, a teeth kicked in, you know, ouch. 
U.S. U-2 espionage planes locate missile launchers in Cuba. Uh-oh. Here we go. Well, maybe if we didn't have nukes in Turkey on uh, Soviet's doorstep, they wouldn't have, uh, you know, done all that. Maybe if we had uh, accepted their terms of getting rid of our missiles, you know, so they wouldn't put in theirs. I mean, you know, if you really look at the history of the Cuban Missile Crisis, you know, really look at it, you'll see that it's completely Western aggression. Once again, I am not a supporter of communism. But in the Cuban Missile Crisis, we were in the wrong. Uh, 1964, little-known American distance runner Billy Mills scored major upset by winning the, uh, the, uh, the 10,000 meter at the Tokyo Olympics, defeated Mohamed Gamadoui, uh, uh, Gamod, Gamodi of Tunisia by 0 0.4 seconds. Only U.S. citizen to ever win the event. All right. Billy Mills coming in for the clutch. Thank you. 1964, Phillips began experimenting with color TV. All right. 1964 as well. Uh, Premier Nikita Khrushchev replaced by Leonid Brezhnev as General Secretary of the Communist Party. Or Soviet Communist Party. Uh, New York Yankees Roger Maris and Mickey Mantle hit home runs back on back-to-back -back pitches. Ooh, it's pretty cool. 1966, 175 U.S. airplanes bombed Vietnam or North Vietnam. That is. 1968, the first live telecast from a manned U.S. spacecraft, Apollo 7. Let's see if we have uh, any comments here so far. Nope, none yet. Uh, what about on the YouTube's? Nope, no. Uh, 1968 as well, a 6.8 earthquake wrecked Australian town of Meckering, rupturing all nearby road or major roads and railways. All right, uh, the loon is gonna go take a nap, so uh, he's uh, he's signed out for the day. So um, yeah, you have me for a little bit. I'm gonna, gonna continue on until 1970, and then I'm gonna wrap this up here. So let's see here. 1968, Gruner and Watson of the U.S. set scuba depth record of 133 meters in the Bahamas. In a National League expansion draft, Expos and Padres chose 30 players each. Opening of the rebuilt Houston Railway Station in London, England. Uh, the Beatles finished recording their double album, The Beatles, more commonly known as the White Album. Then in 1969, the United Kingdom introduced the 50p, the 50 pence coin, Replacing the 10 shilling note in anticipation of currency de de dissimulation uh, in 1971. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip the next uh, 60 years of history. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up here because, um, you know, this show is really not fun to do uh, by your own. So that will conclude the show. Once again, please check the underbar in the description below for any links you may be interested in. Uh, so much history has and continues to be made on a daily basis, and we can only bring you a portion. Please check our sources for more. Like, um, like, please go down there. Like, see all the stuff that uh, we didn't cover here today. For your dose of passive events daily, we stream every day, or at least try to, at 11 in the morning Pacific time, which is 12 noon Mountain, 1 Central, and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, respectively. We do have other shows. We're trying to get off the off the ground here. Like this past month uh, has been really, 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 really tough. So, um, yeah, uh, I wanted to do, uh, a, um, I wanted to do a, uh, a, uh, a, a talk show yesterday, but, uh, we'll try to do that this upcoming Sunday and, you know, wrap up all the stuff that's happened and then, you know, continue on from there. Uh, but yeah, so for all of you and all of us, I am A.O. Xander and you are you viewer. Thank you once again for watching and until next time, uh, you know, whenever you see us again. Wherever that is, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles!